To pay homage to Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, I have structured this introduction into five nonlinear chapters. <laughs> I will begin with the middle. The name Quentin Tarantino has moved well beyond the definition of a wonderkin director. These two words have infiltrated pop culture and even the English language. They are known as Tarantinoisms. A reviewer might say a film is Tarantino-esque. He may also be, it may also be Tarantinian, Tarantino-ish, and très Tarantino. <laughs> Elements of his trademark style are referred to as Quentinisms. Fans of his works call themselves Tarantinophiles or Quentinites. Experts reserve the term Quentinologists. <laughs> Even after filming a particularly bloody scene, directors have been heard saying, we went full Tarantino today. <laughs> and many have even started calling a close-up of a handsome female foot a Quentin. But beyond all the accolades, festival tributes, and theme bars erected in his honor <laughs> is a man who believes in the power of film. And if film is religion, he is its apostle. The set, his church. Quentin stands right next to the camera for each take. He does not direct from a monitor. In fact, Quentin does not allow for a monitor on set, nor cell phones. They must be handed in at Checkpoint Charlie before entering. Should you forget and your phone go off during a take, kill yourself. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> Whenever Quentin says, here's the thing, you better pay attention because he's about to say something very important. You do a good job, you get a cool, man. You get a really great take, he'll scrunch his forehead and nod, and you get two thumbs up. And every once in a while, when you hit that sweet spot, you'll get a genius. <laughs> I never got that. <laughs> Christoph did. <clears throat> Quentin calls the perfect take the big sister. The beautiful one everyone wants to date. Once you've got a big sister in the can, you can go for another one, maybe get a little sister. He says she's not as pretty, but you still take her home. <laughs> Sometimes she proves more interesting. And as for the depth of his work, like the tavern scene in Bastards, for example, you would find that the German movie star and double agent Bridget von Hammersmark is based on a real-life Third Reich star, Zara Ledner, who is reportedly a spy for England. The clandestine meeting takes place in the tavern La Louisiane. It's named after a two-star Parisian hotel where Quentin wrote Pulp Fiction. The characters are forced to play a game that tests one's knowledge of pop culture, history, and more specifically, cinema. The game references an Apache, an Apache Indian, a Polish film star, and King Kong which all leads to a discussion about American slavery. And it's beneath this level we find the gist of the scene, covertly reminding the audience that other nations also carry shame and pain from their own atrocities. In true Quentinese, or Quentinese, I would say, that's a bad move. <laughs> He's a serious filmmaker. He's a unique voice for our time, He's a purist who is sure to leave an indelible mark on cinematic history. And though he's being awarded tonight, I would guess he is as every bit as excited to be sitting here amongst you all, his peers. I guarantee you, he knows of each director in this room. He has screened your films, your shows, he studied them, and he appreciates all your work. And he'll tell you about them if you ask him <laughs> in great detail. He's a joy to work for, he's a joy to work with, and if you've happened to have forgotten what you loved about movies in the first place, 
I tell you, you only have to spend one night with Quentin. Well, not that way. I mean, like an evening with Quentin. 